What makes something a good leading group? Well, what do leading groups do? A leading group is somebody who leads and takes its electrons with it, right? The key thing about leaving groups is they don't just leave, they take their electrons with them when they leave. So a good leaving group has to be somebody who can stabilize those electrons. Good leaving groups have to be things that can somehow stabilize their electrons. This iodine can stabilize the electrons because it's electronegative and it's big, which helps it to stabilize the electrons. Now, here's another type of thing that's a good leading group. This is called a sulfonate. Here's what the sulfonate would look like after it leaves. Now, this is also a good leading group. It can also stabilize the negatives. The leaving group that we have here is a neutral oxygen before it leaves. Now, neutral oxygens are usually bad leaving groups. Neutral oxygens are usually bad leaving groups, so there must be something unusual about this sulfonate that lets it stabilize this negative charge. What is it that this sulfonate can do that's unusual that would stabilize the negative charge? Can you see any way that that sulfonate can stabilize the negative charge that leaving groups normally can't do? The resonance? Yeah, that's good. That's good that you saw that. Most students don't think about that. This negative charge, actually, there's another resonance structure where I could put the negative charge on this oxygen. And there's another resonance st structure where I could put the negative charge on this oxygen. Because the negative charge is spread out, that allows this oxygen to be a good leaving group. So we don't want to make this think that neutral oxygens are usually good leaving groups. Usually we can't use a neutral oxygen as a leaving group. But here we can because the negative charge would be stabilized by resonance. The important point is sulfonates are good leaving groups. Sulfonates are good leaving groups because they're resonance stabilized. And this is what a sulfonate looks like. This R here could be a bunch of different things. But whatever the R group is, the key thing is that we have this resonance stabilization over here. Try to predict what the product would be here. No, I wasn't forgetting anything. Maybe this was a kind of a, a little bit of a mean question. This was a bit of a trick question. Do we have any nucleophilic atoms around? Um, is there a nucleophilic atom around? Yes. Who is the nucleophilic atom? The iodine. Right. It's good that you realize that this is ionic, so there's really a negative charge here. Mm -hmm. Do we have any good leaving groups around? No. So the answer, maybe it was a, a harder question than I, that I intended. The answer should be no reaction. I noticed that your instructor gives you does give no reaction as one of the options, so you have to watch out for that. So that's actually one thing that's not in this table over here. One thing the table is assuming is it's assuming you have a good leaving group. If you don't have a good leaving group, you can't use the table in the first place. If you don't have a good leaving group, the answer should just be no reaction. That was not included in the table. So we can't use was the table here. The, uh, was that one of them on there? Pardon? Was that one of the... Uh... Oh, no, this is just building up to the problem on there. Uh, but this would be definitely a fair question. If you don't have a good leaving group, you can't have a reaction. So this here would be no reaction. Now, probably what this chemist wanted to do was to do, say, a substitution reaction, where the iodide attacked this alpha carbon and this left. However, that won't work because this is not a good leaving group. 
However, we know that if we could make this into a sulfonate, it would be a good leaving group. Sulfonates have neutral oxygens too, and those are good leaving groups. So we need to learn a method for making sulfonates. Well, here's a good method for making a sulfonate. We react the alcohol with tosylate chloride. TS here stands for tosylate. I'm not going to bother drawing the structure can you of that. Just do, can you just uh, first prepare it by adding a strong acid? Adding a strong acid. And protonating the yes. OH, and then making it a good living group, and then have an SN2 reaction? You're right. That's absolutely right. This is simply an uh, It's good that you thought about that. That you're absolutely right. This is simply an alternative to that. But you're absolutely right. If we used, say, instead of using sodium iodide, if we used hydroiodic acid, that would give us what we wanted, because that would protonate this and make it into a better leaving group, and then we could use the iodide to attack. So this is simply an alternative okay. way of getting that same approach. Um, why do we need this if we could just use the acid? Well, maybe we want to avoid using acid. There might be something else that the acid might mess up someplace else in the molecule. So as an alternative to this, this is another way. So the, the good thing about the acid that you realize is the acid would make this into a good leaving group. Well, now we're simply learning an alternative way to make this into a good leaving group. The alternative way is to make it into a sulfonate. And this is a reaction, I was just a second ago saying how we had to memorize the mechanisms and not the reactions. But this is a reaction we really do have to memorize. We should just memorize um, what that, uh, when we react an alcohol with tosylate chloride, we get something that looks like this. And this is a sulfonate. We need to know that this is a sulfonate. And where does the chloride go then? Just it just goes floating off and we don't care about it anymore. So the chloride is just going to go floating off. And now this is a sulfonate. This is what we would call toluene sulfonate. So now we have toluene sulfonate. And now what would happen if we added the sodium iodide? Let's predict the product now. I'm not going to bother saying what happened to the toluene sulfonate, although I guess I could. I guess I will show what happened to it. It just floats off. And this negative charge is going to be stabilized by resonance, because even though I'm not drawing the structure, this is a sulfonate that allows resonance stabilization. Okay. Let's confirm that in our table. What cell are we in at the table? So as you said, this would be SN2. Well, here's the problem that your instructor assigned you. So let's try this one. Let's try to predict the products for these reagents. Is the best to show the inversion of 
configuration? That's a good question. Now, are we creating a stereo center here? Um, no. No. And there's no cis-trans relationships either. So there isn't any stereochemistry that we need to worry about, although. So is this not an SN2 then? Well, it is an SN2, but the stereochemistry only matters for SN. Um, you only have to show the stereochemistry for SN2 if there's some interesting oh, stereochemistry. Okay. Okay. But you're right, this is SN2. If this were a stereo center, then it would be getting inverted. Okay. But since it's not a stereo center, we don't need to worry about that. Right. So I'm not going to bother putting in wedges and dashes. I'm just going to put this in the plane of the page. All right.